Hey everybody, Goldie here, and today we are continuing our look at the latest batch of icons of WrestleMania in WWE Champions, and today we are looking at The Rock. Um, so again, these are all faction boss promoters, uh, so The Rock um, is the one that promotes strikers. So 21k earn 30% more boss shop currency from battles. He is a focused powerhouse and that is his WrestleMania moment. Exclamation, exclamation, bio, the rock, I, W, M. Um, I'm pretty sure we're talking about the icon versus icon match here when it comes to the rock being an icon of WrestleMania. Uh, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I feel like that would be it. Um, anyways, so he is a powerhouse, links, icons of WrestleMania, matching any color gems, charge moves of that color by one more move point, just the one standard set of gear. Uh, a couple different builds we're going to take a look at today. We're starting with a uh, three-star build, so double red with yellow one. Red one is the rock bottom finisher, 13 MP. So throwback to the old school powerhouses having abrasively high finisher charges. Deal 223,816 plus 55,584 bonus damage for every countdown gem and pin the opponent. Red two leaping clothesline, 4 MP. Deal 214,805 damage and steal 11 multiply gems. And yellow won the Spine Buster 5 MP. Deal 62,138 damage and choose 7 gems to make into 2 turn countdown gems that will destroy a random 2x3 area when activated. So Entourage for this, we're going to go with a red move damage focus. Um, we're, the opponent we're going up against doesn't have multiply gems, but this move damage is fairly beefy and fairly low charge. So we're going to look at building that. Uh, Kofi for more yellow MP. Batista for 50%. He's also going to give us plus one MP on the red moves because, that, again, that finisher is high charge. A little tough to get to. Um, Taxina for an extra countdown gem, because we do damage per, and Santa Hogan for 1100 flat, uh, gem damage. I don't have Zombie Rhea, but if you have her, she's the one that boosts this number, so that would be ideal in place of probably Santa Hogan. If you do have Zombie Rhea, you'll, you'll want to consider putting Acro Jimmy here instead of Batista, um, uh, and just get as many countdown gems on the board as possible. The problem is this is a 5 MP move. You're going to, if with, we have Acro Jimmy, you're going to put out 9 countdowns. This is a 13 charge, and these are 2 turn countdowns. So, good luck getting to the finisher before they're destroyed. Um, may need a little bit of luck to even double stack, but that could be doable. Um, so because the finisher is so high charge, I'm going to use an Aftershock plate. Whenever you break three or more green gems, get three red move points at the end of your turn. This is going to help get to the finisher, basically. Um, and for the belt, full fury, red percent, just to help that move damage a little more. Um, but these countdown gems are going to, they're going to trigger and they're likely going to pin because they're going to destroy six gems each. So the finisher is probably just in reserve for if we happen to have countdown gems on the board. Then you would want to hit the finisher. You should get maybe a mill. Um, if not, maybe if you've drained all their health with this 4 MP move and you need to pin. But let's see how this plays out. The fireworks in the background. Nice touch. Okay, so... This is just shy of 500k, so that'll be nice to spam once every turn or two. And then Spinebuster, choose eight. 
We don't have a red match, we don't have a green match, but we do have a yellow match, and with tour perks we have that plus one. So I'll swipe this, and that should get that fully loaded for the next turn. Again, hit this again, but chances are these are going to, these are going to trigger and destroy everything, but you can't say we didn't try here. Again, not much happening for us on the board. Hopefully the destroy will give us a bit of an assist here. Oh, they all just kind of overlapped on each other? That's cool. And he just shoved him? Okay, that's cool too. It's pretty cool too. Yeah, but there goes us losing all of our... <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> There's us losing all of our countdown gems because it took too long to get to the finisher. Um, that'll be resolved in a different build. Again, this is three star. This is what is available at three star. Could you even get him three star? No, he's the ridiculously high shard recruit, isn't he? So you wouldn't even need to run this build. Glory to God. What does Davy D always say? Look at God. It's kind of how I feel with him being a four star recruit because you don't have to worry about running this. But it wouldn't be a preview if we didn't look, right? All right. So, critical hit. We'll go on loot boxes. He's not going to match um, blue. Or yellow for that matter. So let's do that. We got three mil health. Finisher is at 518. Hit the rock bottom. Alright, yep, so about a mil. My scuff nine in the morning lack of coffee brain was right. But that's how that would go again. Zombie Rhea would be ideal, but the base damage of the finisher is high, which is nice. So, even if you don't have countdown gems, you can sneak out a 500k pin in feuds with finisher perks. If you had Damien Priest instead of Batista for 150% on the finisher, that might be worth a look. Um, Snoop and Gooker as trainers, that would be worth a look as well. And then you could probably do like a full armor cheap shot thing. But again, very high charge. So that's how that looks at three star. Let's see what we can do with his four star moves. The first four star build that we're going to take a look at brings in the four star move, which is yellow two, the people's punches. Eight MP, deal 57,921 damage and choose four gems to make into red gems. So this just became a lot easier in terms of stacking and recycling. We're going to run that alongside the finisher and the spine buster, keeping Kofi, Cena, and Santa. Again, zombie Rhea would be ideal here. And we're going to bring in big John stud to create four more red gems, plus that extra yellow MP. Kofi's going to give us an extra red gem as well. And what we're going to do here, keeping full fury with that red percent, and we're going to bring in a general's orders plate. Whenever you break three or more red gems, get three yellow move points at the end of your turn. And we should be able to do this turn one. But of course, now that I've put that out into the universe, roll cascade. Uh, but let's, let me show you how this is going to work. Oh, there is a lot of red gems on the board. Okay. We're going to try anyways, though. Spine Buster. Uh, we'll go there. I don't want to touch any of this, because that just spells disaster. People's Punches. Again, we do have plus one on a match. 
I'm gonna give ourselves a five match here. I'm gonna give ourselves a swipe here. And that red match will trigger the General's Orders plate. We'll take a swipe, that'll trigger it again. Which will allow us to hit this move a second time. Again, don't really want to place these where he's going to match. And now we have it set up that if he kicks out, this is ready to go on the next turn as well. Um, this cluster of red means he probably will kick out, but... Or not. Um, full armor would also work. Just shy of 1.3 million damage on turn one. Uh, the General's Orders plate is clutch and necessary for that tactic to work. But uh, that's how you would win on turn one with that four-star build. He does have other moves, though. So let's, let's go take a look at those. Another four-star build we're going to take a look at brings in both of the green moves along with the four-star yellow two move. So green one, the Samoan drop 9 MP, deal 97,068 damage and destroy eight random red gems. Green 2, the Flowing DDT 8 MP, deal 86,332 damage and choose 7 gems to make into row break gems. And then the People's Punches, choose 4 gems to make into red, that's plenty all we need. Uh, so this is going to be double MP, Kofi and Steel. Uh, if my tour perks were maxed, this would be turn 1, but they're not, so we're going to take a swipe and make it turn 2. And then Santa Hogan and Typhoon for gem damage. Now belt here, I've switched to a yellow percent because we're going to use the people's punches as a finisher essentially. And I've kept the general's orders played on, no harm, no foul. Um, if there was like a, whenever you generate four or more row break gems, increase your whatever damage by whatever percent for however many turns, that would be the one I would use, but that doesn't exist. So this is what I'm going to try. So again, this is going to be ready to go on turn two. Let's just do that. Let him do his thing. And then we make seven row breaks. And oh, wouldn't you know, the board is seven by seven. So it's not going to matter what column you put these on, as long as they're all in the same one. And then five gems to make into red. We only need a four break here because that's going to destroy the entire column and subsequently blow up the board. So with the remainder, we're just going to cover up the loot boxes to get a little more gem damage as opposed to doing 1101 from breaking a loot box. And the whole board goes boom. And then the general's orders plate kind of helps us refill this just in case. And he kicked out. Go figure. Uh, but have no fear. Everything's ready to go on the next turn. There's too many loot boxes on the board for my liking. For damage doing. There we go. Uh... There's only three, so might as well hit this and cascade into oblivion for some move damage. Ooh, that was lucky. Yes, I did see that, by the way, but. And then same strategy. Put these all on the same column. Make 
like a four match, cover up a loot box, and blow up the entirety of the board. Wow. Okay, just go ahead and kick out. That's fine. That's totally fine. Third time's a charm. that. Now, alternatively, what you could do is use this and place the row breaks on reds. And then use the Samoan drop to destroy red gems. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's 9. It only destroys 8. I'd much rather do this and have control over placement and red gems to make sure the entire board is getting destroyed. So I'm not going to hit this move now because there's too many red gems. I don't want to risk it. And then again, four match, cover up a loot box, place all of the gems. Oh my god. Ain't this some shit? Well, I mean, you know what I'm trying to do, right? Like, it's just a repeat all the moves kind of thing. Well, now I'm just grumpy. Well, now I'm just grumpy. That works out perfectly. Uh, let's go here. Cover up the loot and the black gems. Because we don't really do a lot of damage with those. This should be it. Thank you. Thank you. So four times the charm, apparently. But I think that 719 was the lowest amount of damage we dealt using that. So not terrible. It's an option. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of the double MP if it doesn't win on, win on turn one, which I completely understand. Um, let's take a look at one more build using his five-star move. Red three is the People's Elbow, the five-star move, nine MP deal 135,418 damage and make eight random gems into green gems. So we are going to run this alongside the two green moves. Um, and this is going to help us, you know, have a shot at recycling if RNG doesn't go our way, which is often the case. Uh, Entourage, I've uh, kept everyone in except I take, I've taken out Kofi and I've put in Zombie Seth. Green moves that destroy gems will destroy five more gems. So the Samoan drop is destroying 13. Instead of using um, the yellow two move to choose to destroy all the row breaks, we're going to put the row breaks on red gems and then we're going to make it so we destroy 13 so we have a chance to actually destroy all the row breaks. Uh, for the belt, I have an aftershock plate and my green percent is not fury. So I'm bringing in the dreaded tier 5 rainbow percent metal. Um, it does give me some substats on green gems and green moves. And it makes all of our moves do 53% more damage. So, yay. It's not terrible. But, like, for the love of God, please scale these rainbow metals. Anyways, let's see what this does. Uh, so again, turn 2. Max tour perks. Be a little easier. 
But you know what? I want to see this move animation because to me, this is childhood. Not childhood, but let me know in the comments if you ever hit your siblings with that. Because I know I did. Okay, that was really cool. Thank you for going down memory lane with me. Uh, let's move on. And, okay, so we're going to place the row breaks. And we have exactly seven red, so that works. And then destroy 13. We don't have 13, but this is more just to make sure you're getting all of the row break gems. Nice cascade. Everything is filled. 826,000. It's alright. It's alright. Of course he gets a, a red four break. Mm. Yeah, whatever. Well, that left us with three, but. Uh, so we got leftovers. Let's just put them on greens. And 444,000 is the one he's not going to kick out of. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, let's conclude the preview. Okay, so I kind of lied. Um, this is for my NWO perfect having people. I'm sorry if you don't have him. Um, but I do, so. I'm gonna run double green with Spine Buster. Steel and NWO perfect so everything is ready to go on turn one. Gem damage here. And we're gonna run ye old Z plate because I just know somebody is going to be in the comments like why didn't you use the z plate well now i'm using it so i didn't forget it was just a matter of finding a build that worked with it but this would be the one because you're going to blow up the board there's no point in running the z plate if you're going to hit the finisher that doesn't destroy them so again sorry if you don't have nwo perfect Uh, we're destroying eight. Five. Okay, perfect. So we're going to put the countdown gems in the rows where there aren't reds. Because I honestly don't really care about breaking them. I just want to get them out so the plate will trigger. And then seven to make into row breaks. We're only destroying eight. But luckily, they're dispersed a couple on the same row. So if we miss, you know, that one, but we hit this one, that row still breaks. So let's try that. And then board goes boom.
da 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 Okay, now I'm done. Now I'm done. Let's wrap it up. Okay, so now that concludes my preview of The Rock, Icons of WrestleMania again. He is part of the new batch of promoters for Boss Shop Currency again, and he is available in the Boss Shop. So you need the promoters to speed up getting the promoters, but it is what it is. Um, he promotes Strikers. I believe he's a 4,000 shard recruit. The one thing about having preview characters on the roster is you can't see their recruit point. So I believe he's 4,000 at 5 silver. Um, but lucky me, this is the one that I got from the $5 offer. Um, not sure if I'd build him as a fighter. Because there's just so many good powerhouses. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments. He's he's kind of an interesting, fun one. Um, again, if you have Zombie Rhea, that's going to be really beneficial. I don't have her, so that's probably going to hinder my building of him. Um, but I do have... He promotes strikers. Ooh, he'd look good on that RVD. Just saying. Uh, but let me know what you think of him in the comments. What's your favorite story of dropping people's elbows on people? Uh, did you watch the Icon versus Icon match? Were you Team Rock? Were you Team Hogan? How'd you feel about that? And uh, let me know any other questions, comments, concerns, thoughts in the comments of the video. Don't be like that one douche nozzle that called out Grisson for absolutely fucking lutely nothing and just decided to be mean to him and call him a bunch of names. Don't do that. We're better than that. We're adults. Um, but yeah, don't do that. Be nice. Spread positivity. We can all learn something from each other. So let's use our platform to do that instead of spread vile hate and troll people for no fucking reason. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Be sure to like, share with your friends, and subscribe so you're notified when my next gameplay video comes out. And uh, just... Wouldn't you know it, Mick has come to sit on the laptop, which means preview over, pet time commence. Thank you again for watching, and thank you for being a friend. Mick, you want to say bye? That's Mick saying bye. Bye!